Okay, so I'd also like to sneak this in the beginning of the video here. We're uh, going to be doing giveaways through the YouTube channel here uh, for the flies that we're tying. So uh, this week's video, we'll be giving away a half dozen of these uh, hoppers in a few different colors, just whatever I have extra. Uh, we'll be giving away to you guys. Just have to comment uh, at the end of the video. I will give you what the details on what you need to comment or you know stuff like that. Yeah, we will just wait two weeks, and then after the two week period is over, I'll go through and whatever video I'm posting. Then I will just announce that we're giving away the flies from X video. <laughs> so just watch to the end. I'll give you the details. And uh, thank you for watching. All right, everybody, welcome back. Uh, sorry for the hiatus from uploading videos to YouTube. I've uh, just been very busy. Actually, had some guide trips, and I've uh, just been busy at the shop here, trying to get everything going and uh, our newborn. And yeah, life's been hectic, but wouldn't have it any other way. So. I gotta get back on this YouTube thing for you guys. Get some more videos out here. Just figured I'd do some uh, some foam bugs here over the summer. This is a, just a little hopper pattern that I started tying a couple years ago, about a year ago. But I've been fishing a lot, especially lately, and uh, it's been producing. Um, yeah, I'm gonna pop this one out of the vise, and I will talk through tying another one with you guys here. For this fly, we're going to use Arex's FW550 nymph, traditional nymph hook in the size 8. <clears throat> the straw, this hook is plenty strong enough for our trout. And as you can see, uh, it's got a pretty nice gate gap here. So that's going to, uh, I just like a uh, wider gap hook on my hopper patterns the commercially available ones a lot of times have a very small gap and I've lost a lot of fish just having them shake it out because they don't have that gap so for thread we're going to use some Vivas 6 a this is Vivas 6 a in uh, black color we're just gonna start our thread probably about halfway back our shank this isn't going to matter too much. We're just going to end up coating most of this shank with a thread here eventually. So I just cut off my tag end there. Just going to bring my thread back to right about the bend of our hook here. And we're going to come in with our first material. First material is going to be crystal flash. I'm just going to grab, I got two fibers. This is how long there, a few inches, let me see, three-ish inches. I'm going to double these over in my hand here and cut them in half again. So we end up with four. We're going to tie it in half and half, 50-50 here, right on top of the hook. So then we're going to double this back, and when we double back, that will give us then eight strands back here of this crystal flash and it doesn't matter if we're we got a bunch of different lengths here that's fine we will uh, clean that up when we trim it up okay so just as a little bit of prep so you can bang out a bunch of these bugs uh, in succession here I use a cutter for my foam this is a small size I also have a medium size one this uh, cutter is the Chernobyl style tapered end foam body cutter so it's a it's a tapered cutter uh, hopefully you guys can see that just gonna cut the foam and then I'm gonna it, it ends up making these foam pieces here you can see this ends rounded this ends flat okay so we got this foam in a couple different widths uh, the yellow or the underbody the bot one I'm going to be using for the thorax I guess it would be of this uh, bug is just a real thin piece of two millimeter foam and this is about uh, a three or four millimeter foam which is going to be the wing on top 
So yeah, I just cut a bunch of these beforehand in the different colors and everything like that. Um, one thing is if you're trying to float, say, t uh, dropper with a 3.5 or even 3.30 uh, with some lead wraps, uh, you know, your nymph for your dropper, you're going to need, uh, if that was the case, I would use multiple pieces of the thicker foam. Just so then you have a little bit more float to the fly. 3.5 millimeter tungsten bead will pull down this fly that we're tying right here. So, if I'm uh, using a dropper off of this pattern, I always just try and make sure it's just a little bit less weight than, say, the my anchor nymphs that I'm using in a tight line setup. Okay, I'm going to stop rambling, sorry. And we're going to come in with our... We're going to do the same color that was in the vice when we started the video here. So I'm going to take my yellow foam. I have the rounded end towards the back. And the first thing we're going to do is come in with some super glue. This is Gorilla Glue Super super Glue. Uh, anytime you can use super glue on foam, it makes a very good bond. And uh, with hoppers, that's the one issue you're going to have is uh, the foam rolling around on the hook. And super glue... That bond that it has, it just ends up, uh, it sticks much better. You're going to get much more durability out of your fly. So, we're going to just hang this over just a little bit past our hook bend here. We're going to come over top of it with two wraps. One, two, tighten down on the second one. I'm going to pull the foam back. I'm going to do one, two, three, four wraps back on top we're just caught making like a a ribbed thorax here as you guys can see pull back one two three four one two one two three four one two okay we got you right there I'm going to pull this up and cut out the rest of this and we're going to tie down this little tag that's sticking out here just to give us a nice clean base for the material so that we're going to come in with next. Now that we have this here, we can cut our crystal flash so that's all one length as you can see there. Just tidies it up a little bit. Then I'm going to come back on top of this with some glue, some more of my super glue, just another spot of it right here on top over your thread wraps and where we're going to tie in this next piece of foam. So this is a little bit thicker foam. This is brown and this is going to be hung over just past our little thorax here just to look like, say, the wings of the hopper. One, two wraps over that. Make sure you're centered. And then we're just going to advance our thread, tying down this front piece. And just make sure everything is good and centered. And lashed down. And then we're going to bring our thread back to our wing casing here. Okay, this is where I'm going to start putting in a little bit of dubbing. So the dubbing I'm going to use for this one is uh, our ice dub and pheasant tail color. This is like a brown color. I'm just going to come in with a little bit of it right now. We're just making basically a little bit of a bump so that when we tie our legs in, they're not trying to uh, just mash straight up against this body here. So we just got a bump of that. We're going to come in with our rubber legs. So the rubber legs I'm using are cut off of the, the piece that they come on and then cut into half. I'm going to use one piece. It's a <laughs> trick I've learned. <laughs> Tying in many, many rubber legs. We're just going to tie it back. I'm going to, uh, I'll do it on my side. You won't, guys won't be able to see as well. When I do it on your side, it'll be uh, a lot easier to see. So I'm going to Measure this back right about where my thorax is. And I'm going to tie it into the back and then just advance my thread to the front. On this side, 
and then I'm gonna loop this around in front I'm gonna measure to this other leg on my side and I'm just gonna grab that you guys might not be able to see that good for now but we're gonna trap that bring our thread to the back again and then we're gonna just move these legs around get them where we want them before we secure everything down I'm gonna spin up our thread a little bit come in with some more of this uh, pheasant tail ice dub let's get a little noodle on here and then we're gonna bring that just covering all of our thread wraps and everything here just right up to where our legs are tied in in the front and our little head here now I'm gonna come back in with that piece that I cut off it's actually the uh, scrap from here and this is just going to be like a little bit of an indicator just to make it uh, catch your eye a little bit better. I use yellow ones. Uh, sometimes we use orange for different patterns. Uh, the orange shows up really well. I'm just using the yellow because it's scrap from this piece. And it's here, so I might as well use it. So I'm just going to clean up my edge on it. Make sure it's nice and straight. I'm going to put a little spot of super glue out right here on top. In that dubbing, we're going to spin our thread up a little bit. And we're going to place this on top. Come over it with one, two wraps. Make sure it's where we want it. It's looking good. And then I'm going to grab everything, pull it all back, and then advance my thread up here I don't know how well you guys will be able to see this but just advance our thread up to the eye of the hook give yourself a few wraps and then whip finish or half inch off your fly finish it off here we're just gonna do a little bit of trimming and some UV work and we are done oh, great I got my half inch over top of my legs there we go Just pull that all tight and down. Trim out our thread. Trim this little top piece. Just about even with your little indicator there. Come right in front. Just pull that. Trim those. And boom. Hopefully you guys can see that. This is our little hopper pattern. It's uh, it's not the most realistic hopper pattern, but it's uh, it's very effective and very fast. That's the, the greatest thing about it is you can tie these quick. And if you get them stuck in a tree somewhere, you break them off, that's fine. I had clients to lose a bunch of them today. It's all good. Just tie some more. It's not a big deal. Uh, and then, like I said, yeah, you can eat, you can with this barb, you could run droppers right off of here, or run it on some type of other uh, nymphing system here. But uh, now we're just gonna invert our hook real quick. I like to just coat the bottom of this with a little bit of UV. Let's get out any of these stragglers of the dubbing. For the UV I'm going to use on this one, I'm going to use my Raid Zap uh, Thick Flex. And I'm just going to put a spot of it right here by our hook eye. Into that dubbing, those thread wraps right up front. Get that in there. And then I'm going to put a line of it along our thorax. Just to lock all of that stuff in place so it's not trying to spin. It just makes for a nice solid body on the fly. Gives it that extra durability. So yeah, this is our, uh, this is this very simple hopper pattern. Simple hopper pattern that'll get it'll trick the fish just as well. It'll uh, the hook it will stand up to bass. It'll stand up to trout. It's uh, 
it's just a great for pond fishing for you know hopper fishing for our trout this is all you really need it's a it's a big attractor and there's grasshoppers pretty much everywhere <laughs> and we've already got a bunch of them out here that's for sure and we're up in buffalo so so this is just a very simple hopper pattern here it's quick it's easy to tie um, just gets it'll get you by with a lot of different species and it's e easy to tie which is a <laughs> a huge thing for me with tying flies uh like I said, this this extra hook gap will allow it to stay in fish a lot better than, say, your store-bought or uh, commercially tied chubby Chernobyls and hoppers and stuff like that. A lot of them are tied on a very small gap hook. So this is not, it's a very quality A-Rex hook, uh, big wide gap, and it's going to stay in those fish. Um so a majority of these materials are available through our online store. I'm going to uh, be adding the actual pre-cut um, hopper bodies. I'm going to get more cutters and cut more of them and have them in stock here in the shop and just available for the through the online store. Uh, it's just to make make it easier for you guys, you know. And then I can also we can also do a. Um, a material kit for this pattern as well uh, I use this pattern a lot so it's a uh, it's one that's stuck around and definitely has caught a bunch of fish uh, we have a few variations we're gonna mess with here too a few different videos I might do the beetle one uh, which is a very similar pattern um, and then a few other foam flies definitely some poppers stuff like that so uh, keep a look out for those and yeah, like I said, I was, I'm planning on having the um, pre-cut bodies up in stock as well uh, on the website here in the next few days. So give those a look, and uh, eventually I will also be adding this pattern to the website, Etsy store, all of that too, because it's one that I have tied a lot of and fished a lot of, and uh, I need other people to fish them too. <laughs> So thank you for watching the video. Please like and subscribe to the channel. Um, I will get more videos up. Uh, we will get on a regular schedule here again. And uh, we're going to have fishing videos coming up very soon. Uh, it's just a matter of having some extra time to uh, record and edit and do all of that the stuff involved. Which I'm not complaining. I'm sorry. <laughs> Okay, so for this week's giveaway as well for the flies, just any comment. If you put any comment in the uh, comment section below on this video here, uh, you'll be entered to win six of the uh, flies. Uh, when I draw somebody, I'll just get a hold of them and get details from them, pretty much just an address, and I will send them on over to you. And once again, thank you everyone for watching. I appreciate the... Uh, growing interest and we're gonna keep on posting and keep on trucking away at this uh thank you for your patience and waiting for this video and uh we will not be uh to another month without one <laughs> all right thank you for watching have a good one guys yeah it is like running down yeah I didn't realize I was fucking recording right now.